All throughout my GCSEs and my A-levels, computer science has always been my favorite subject. I got an A-star at GCSE, and then I got an A-star at A-level, and here I am studying it at university. But it's not like I was a child prodigy building an app before I even turned 10 or anything. Like a lot of you watching right now, the first code I ever wrote was in year 10 at the beginning of the computer science GCSE course. And so how did I go from not knowing that much to being quite proficient? Well, the formula is actually quite easy. But before we talk about it, it's important that we first don't write ourselves off from the beginning. Computer science at GCSE will probably be a completely new subject for you. Unlike math and English and science, in most schools at least, we're not taught computer science up until like year 10. And what that means is that you and the majority of your class and the majority of people worldwide taking GCSE computer science haven't been exposed to computer science before year 10. That shouldn't worry you. In fact, it should comfort you. Everyone else's imposter syndrome is kicking in, telling them that they're not set out to be successful in computer science. While you know that with enough effort directed in the right methods, you can easily get the top grades. How do we do it though? Well, like I said before, it's a pretty simple subject to do well in. First, we need to understand the nature of computer science as a GCSE. Unlike most subjects, which are pretty much the same throughout, computer science is split into two parts. And those two parts are theory and programming. And I don't know about all of the exam boards, but from what I know is that they mostly hold equal weightings. And that's why I love computer science. Having both of these elements will give you a higher likelihood that you'll succeed at something. For example, let's say you hate math. If you hate math, then you're going to hate every lesson you do, every topic you study, and every question you solve. Because they're all similar in their nature, despite all of the topics being different. But if you hate the computer science theory questions, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to hate the programming questions. And so you're going to have something to excel in. That being said, to get the top grades, we need to give each of these two elements their due right. Let's say we only focus on theory, and we kind of put programming to the side. Even if we get full marks in the theory paper, we're still limiting the total grade we can get to a B or even a C. And so how do we tackle each element? Well, first let's start with theory. The thing I love about computer science theory is that it's quite similar to the other sciences, you know, bio, chemistry, physics. And so we can approach it in a similar way to how we would approach the sciences. For me, that's always been and always will be the NFT method. I've talked about the NFT method many times in many different videos, and most recently in how to get nines in all of the GCSE sciences, which you can check out right here for a more detailed explanation of the method. But to keep it short, make notes and then make flashcards and then do test questions. It sounds simple, and it is, but there's a lot of nuance in when you should do each stage to optimize it to get the top grades. And that's why I would recommend watching that video to fully understand how to implement it. And that's how you approach the more familiar theory elements of computer science. But for the majority of you, you haven't programmed before. And so how do we revise for it? The way I did it throughout school, and the way that got me the A stars, is as follows. I firstly go through the syllabus. Now this is very important because computer science is taught very differently everywhere. And so if you watch a general computer science video, it might teach you a lot of stuff that's redundant, stuff that you don't really need for the course, and that will only make stuff more complicated than it needs to be. I go through the syllabus and make a list of all of the different functions and methods and algorithms that I need to know. All the way from using print to for loops to functions, I highlight them and make a list of all of them. I then try to make sure that I learn and understand what each of these elements do. Unfortunately, in this context, we can't really just rely on our memorization. You can't out-memorize a programming paper like you can with biology. We need to be able to understand and digest what everything does. To do this, I'd watch a YouTube video on that specific thing that I'm learning. For example, let's say I'm learning while loops. I'd only watch a video about while loops and make sure that it doesn't go past the scope of the syllabus. After finishing the video, I'd then try to find very basic questions online. You can just search up while loop beginner questions with Python or Java or whatever language you're learning and then just try to solve those questions. This is where the actual learning is happening. Trying to implement the things you learn in different scenarios and then making mistakes, making errors and then going through them and fixing them and then repeating. That cycle is what got me the top grades. Now once I do a couple of questions for while loops, I'll then check it off and move on to the next thing. Lists, for example. Now it's important that you try to practice each of these elements once a week or once every two weeks. You might think that's quite hard, but you're going to get to a point where you're doing large questions which implement all of these elements instead of doing a question for each separate element, and that takes less time. Because in the exam, you're not going to have a question on just for loops, and then another question for while loops, and then another question for lists. There will be a couple of questions that bring all of the things you learn together, and that's why it's important to understand what every single thing does, so you can be sharp with your problem-solving skills in the exam, and utilize those problem-solving skills to get those top grades. 